Good morning, Project Wild friends. I am out at the beautiful Rivery Park this morning. You can see the water behind me. I'm in my favorite secret spot. It's very quiet. The birds are out chirping. I can see bugs out on the water and little fishies. A little bit noisy because we have a lot of airplane noise this morning. The airport's really close by, isn't it? There's a little one here in Georgetown. But I wanted to bring you out here because I think the leaves are just so pretty and I'm loving the birds. So this week, I wanted to talk to you about tracks, animal tracks, but we're gonna change it up a little bit, and here's why. So animal tracks are the footprints or paw prints that animals make in the mud or in the snow. Well, it hasn't snowed, and also it's been really dry recently. It hasn't rained at all. So it's hard to show you tracks when there just aren't any tracks right now. So what I wanna do is just talk to you a little bit about what tracks are, and then next time we have some rain, I'll make another video where I go out and I show you some of the tracks from my yard. We have a lot of deer that live in our yard, and we have raccoons, and we have skunks, and possum, and a fox, and roadrunners, and all kinds of animals, and I want you to get to see those tracks in real life. Okay, so what are tracks? Well, if you think about when you go to the beach or you go somewhere and you walk, you make a footprint. And sometimes when we wanna do something fun for art, we can paint our hands and we can make a print with the paint on our hands. Well, the animals don't use paint, but they do get mud on their hands. So sometimes we'll see those almost like a handprint where it's made from mud or it'll be like a footprint on the beach where they step into the mud or the snow or whatever's on the ground that's squishy and they leave a track. We're really fortunate here in our area because not only do we get tracks from the animals that live around us right now, but we also have places where we can go and see dinosaur footprints from long, long, long ago. And we'll talk more about that when we get to fossils in January. I know, dinosaurs are pretty cool. I would love to talk about them. So. What do tracks tell us? Well, tracks are a clue. They tell us what animals have been there, maybe what direction they were headed. We can follow the tracks and see where they headed towards water, where they headed towards a tree. We can follow those tracks and see where the animals went. The size of the track also tells us, was this a grown-up animal? Was it a baby animal? Mama deers have tracks that are about this big, about that big compared to my face. But those baby deer, they have little tiny footprints. So you can see if you have a big deer and a baby deer right next to each other, that big deer is probably a doe. It's probably its mama and the baby is a fawn. So tracks can tell us all kinds of things. And there are some great things that you can do with tracks and I'm gonna tell you more about those when I actually get to show you tracks because I want you to be able to see them and do them. Okay, so that's enough about tracks for today. Also, next week is Thanksgiving. And I know we think about families getting together and we think about pumpkin pie and all kinds of yummy food. And a lot of times we think about turkeys, don't we? Yeah, most of us eat turkey. That is the traditional food for Thanksgiving. Maybe it's different at your house and that's okay too. But a lot of places, people like to eat turkey. But did you know that turkeys are here in the wild in Texas? Turkeys are actually all over the place in the United States, except at the very top, like Minnesota, where it gets really, 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 really cold. So the turkeys don't so much live there, but they pretty much live most of the other places in the United States. They live out in the wild. Now they look a little bit different than the turkeys that we get in the grocery store. They tend to be a little skinnier. Their feathers are a different color. And um, they're a little bit taller and their legs are longer. So they're a little bit of a different shape than those turkeys. So the turkeys that we buy in the grocery store, those are called domestic turkeys. So those are ones that farmers have raised with the plan that we're gonna eat those turkeys. That's the plan. 
And wild turkeys are the ones that don't rely on humans at all. And we talked about that in the very beginning, the difference between domestic animals and wild animals. So wild turkeys, we don't feed them. They just go out and they do their turkey thing. So um, turkeys, they live in a variety of habitats, but they really like some wooded area because they like to roost up in the trees. So at night, to keep them safe from the coyotes and other predators, they will sit up in the trees. Did you know that wild turkeys can fly? Not very far, but domestic turkeys can't fly at all. They're too chunky. But wild turkeys, they can fly up off of the ground and into the trees, and they stay in the trees to stay safe. That's their roost. And other things that turkeys need, they need food, and they need a source of water, and then they need somewhere to den down or make a nest. So they don't make a nest up in a tree like birds do, like other birds, like songbirds and things like that. They're gonna roost more towards the ground area in different cavities and things like that. So wild turkeys, are um, their legs are nice and long. They're not as thick as um, domestic turkeys are, and they have much more colorful feathers. Their feathers can be brown, but they also have hints of different colors in them. They have reds and all kinds of things. So what do turkeys eat? Well, turkeys eat bugs. They eat all kinds of different berries that they find. They eat seeds and nuts like pecans and acorns. And sometimes they'll even eat lizards and frogs, like little amphibian type animals. A boy turkey is called a tom. That's its name. All the boy turkeys are toms. And the girls are called hens, just like chickens. Baby, uh, baby turkeys are called poults. And their eggs, when they're in the nest, it's called a clutch of eggs. So they have two different parts of their beak. And I'm looking back at my notes because I want to make sure I tell you all the things that I want to tell you about turkeys. So they have two parts of their beak. So if you look at our noses, I'll turn so you can see it in the sun. They have a flap of skin that comes over the top. Okay? Flap of skin. And that is called a snood. A snood. S-N-O-O-D. A snood. And then their other flap of skin is under their chin, and that's called a wattle. So you'll see the red part on the bottom, and you'll see the flap of skin over the top. So we have the snood, and we have the wattle. And wild turkeys, um, you'll see them a lot, especially in the winter time when they come out and they're feeding and they're nesting and they're doing all of those turkey things. So really cool things about turkeys. I'm gonna show you a picture of our turkeys and then I'm gonna read you a book here. But first, let me tell you some things that you can do to explore more about turkeys. So I didn't have a book uh, specifically about turkeys. Now there are tons of books about turkeys out there. There's all kinds of funny Thanksgiving books and things like that that you can read that are pretend stories about turkeys. And those are really fun. But those turkeys tend to look a little bit different. So you can go um, to the library or to the bookstore and you can get some different Thanksgiving books, but you can also get some nonfiction books about turkeys to see what turkeys are like in the wild. Turkey crafts, there are tons of them all kinds of Thanksgiving crafts and things like that. Grown-ups, you can go on to Pinterest and you can find hand turkeys and you can make turkeys out of toilet paper rolls and you can make them out of paper plates. There's tons of turkey crafts out there. Um, feathers can be purchased at any of the craft stores. Most often they're chicken feathers, but we can pretend and those can be turkey feathers. So those are fun things that you can do, especially over the Thanksgiving break, and you can use them as centerpieces or placemats or fun things when you guys are enjoying your Thanksgiving dinner. So another fun thing that you can do with those feathers that you get from the craft store is you can make Play-Doh or moon dough turkeys. So make the body of the turkey nice and big and round, stick those feathers in there, give them some eyes, give them a beak, See what you can do to make a snood and a waddle for your turkey. Um, you can also make yourself a turkey snack. So what would turkeys eat? Well, you can make a trail mix with all kinds of different dried fruits and seeds and nuts and you can have yourself a snack that a turkey would eat. 
I don't know that I would eat the frogs or the lizards, but if you're not allergic to nuts, nuts and seeds and um, dried fruit are a delicious snack that lots of our wild animals enjoy. Mm. And um, speaking of going out on the trail, you take that out on your snack and you can go out on the trail and see all of the different animals that are out right now. The leaves are really pretty and there's lots of great places to go walking in our area. If you go to any of our state parks or some of our other big like wildlife areas, you can often find a bird blind. Now a bird blind is really great, especially if you're going to be down um, kind of in the Garner area or Kerrville, those areas down there, South Llano State Park is another one that has a turkey population that lives there. Um, but a bird blind is a very quiet place. You have to be very quiet when you go to the bird blind. And it looks sort of like a little house or it has a fence up where you can hide behind it. And the places will put out bird seed and different things to attract the birds and you can watch the birds that come. If you get lucky, maybe you'll get to see a turkey in the wild. So something else fun that you can do is you can learn to gobble like a turkey. <laughs> I'm gonna be silly for a minute. So turkeys, what do they say? Gobble, gobble, right? Well, here's how they sound. Gobble, 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 gobble. Gobble, 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 gobble. And you can practice and make that turkey gobble sound. Very fun, I like making turkey sounds. All right, so. I'm gonna grab my books while I'm down there. I'm also gonna move the camera around so you can see the other side. The sun is pretty bright where I'm at, so I'm gonna move it so that you can actually see what else is behind me. Okay, here we go. Ooh, isn't that pretty? So pretty. There's the other area way back there. The water looks so nice and the trees, so pretty. I love it. All right, and I'm gonna move you over here to this side. Got my camera on my tripod. Ooh, that's crooked. Okay, there we go. All right, let me move this down just a little bit more so you can get a better view. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna show you, I brought you my big bird book where I showed you the vultures and things but I'm gonna also show you some of our turkey friends. Okay, so they like to live somewhere shady where there's some woods, like we said, um, especially oak trees, which we're lucky we have lots of oak trees, don't we? And um, they really like acorns in the winter time. Acorns are one of their favorite things. They have big, strong beaks, and um, there's all kinds of different variations on turkeys. So maybe the turkeys here look a little bit different than the turkeys that live up north. Their feathers might be different colors and that's okay. Um, but here is a picture of our wild turkey. You can see him there. Yeah. So you can see that waddle underneath the chin and you can see the snood over the top of our turkey. And the, the um, boy turkeys have big poofy feathers. They get all poofy and things because they want the girls to think that they're pretty. So the boys in the bird world usually get the prettier feathers. Very unfair. All right, here's our book for Thanksgiving. It's called Giving Thanks. So if you look in the front cover, looks like a grown up and a younger kid and they're going walking through the forest. let you see the picture and then I'll read the words. Thank you, Mother Earth. Thank you, Father Sky. Thank you for this day. This is what my father says every morning, standing in the field near our house. They live out in the country, don't they? Like his Native American friends, singers and storytellers, Dad believes that the things of nature are a gift and that in return we must give something back. We must give thanks. He gives thanks to the frogs 
and the crickets singing down by the creek, and to all the tiny beings with six or eight legs weaving their tiny stories close to the earth. Do you see the spider? Yeah, beautiful spider. Hello, frog friend. He says thank you to chanterelles, the wild mushrooms that smell like pumpkins. He says thank you to the trees that wave their arms and spin their leaves in the breeze. He says thank you, fox, at a glimpse in the tall grass, the pointy ears and the bushy tail dancing. He says thank you to the deer who have passed this way. Their tracks, like two fingers, pressed in the dirt, pointing towards water. He says thanks to the quail, who flare up and scatter and rejoin. He says thank you, Jack Rabbit, as it zigs and zags and jumps and leaps 25 feet through the air, racing its shadow. He says thank you, Hawk, as it circles high in the sky and cries scree, scree, before it dives. He says thank you, Sun, as it begins to sink beyond the hills. Thank you for this day. He says thank you to the moon for coming this way. To me, it's a little embarrassing to say thanks to trees and things, but dad says it becomes a habit and makes you feel good. Thank you stars, I say, as we near home, and the stars come out one by one, as if from hiding. We see our raccoon friend. The end. What can you say thank you to today about? Thankful for the trees, thankful for our families, thankful for our pets and our homes and being healthy and being safe and having yummy food to eat. There's so many things that we can be thankful for this Thanksgiving. I hope you find something special to be thankful for every day. It's so important. I hope you enjoy your Thanksgiving. Have fun making turkey things and I will see you after Thanksgiving break. Bye.